Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. In this lecture, we are going to talk about two more types of organic molecules, and those are going to be the alcohols and the ethers. And let's go ahead and look at how we go ahead about how we name these. And we can look at, first of all, the alcohols. And what an alcohol is, again, it is a hydrocarbon, meaning it has hydrogen and carbon atoms. And in this case, we have replaced a hydrogen atom by a hydroxyl or an OH group. So the hydrogen atom gets then replaced by this OH. Now, please note, this does not, even though OH has been associated with bases, this does not make it a base. The bonding will be a covalent bond, and that's, that's why we're not getting a base. It is a covalent bond and not an ionic bond in things like sodium hydroxide that we've looked at previous, previously. So we can have things like ethanol. Ethanol is the alcohol in beer, wine, and other types of liquors from fermented sugars. And with the yeast, that will actually take the sugar and convert it into an alcohol. So the yeast will then substitute, uh, and we'll get an OH here uh, from the hydrogen. So what was hydrogen now becomes an OH. Some carbon dioxide gas is released, and that produces the ethanol, the actual alcohol. Now we can name these alcohols just as we named other organic compounds that we looked at previously and we're going to have to go back to what we looked at in the previous ones to be able to understand these because the naming is from that underlying structure of the hydrocarbon. So we look here at this example, how many carbon atoms do we have in our chain here? Well there are five carbon atoms present and that is going to be a pentane. So this, if we had no OH here, if this was just the hydrogen atom, so if this oxygen did not exist, then we would have pentane and we would be done. However, we do have the oxygen atom, so we can erase that. And let's go ahead and look at what, we, what it becomes. Well, what we do is we take the final E in the name of the hydrocarbon and replace it by OL. So the E goes away, we add OL, and that then becomes pentanol. So with five carbons, we would have pentanol. And the number indicates the carbon atom to which the group is bonded. So it's carbon atom number two in this case, if we're counting here, one, two. This is carbon atom number two is the one that has the OH group here. So it would be two pentanol. And depending on what that number could change, depending on which carbon, which of the five carbon atoms the OH group is bonded to. Now we can go ahead and look at our other example. The other thing we were looking at here was the ethers. Ethers are hydrocarbons with a group, a functional group of oxygen. So in this case, we've replaced a carbon atom here by an oxygen. There is an oxygen that is binding them together. And there are two different ways to name these. We can use the IUPAC name. And in that case, what we do, we look here and we see that there are the carbon groups. So you will have a methyl group here. And th that has just one carbon. And over here, you have a group with two carbons that would be an ethyl group. So you have your methyl group on this side, your ethyl group on this side, and the oxygen binds them together. So you take the smaller of these groups, which in this case would be the methyl group, and it becomes an oxy, an oxy added to it. So the methyl comes, Al comes off, and it becomes methoxy. So this part, the methyl group, become, adds the oxy. And then we continue with the larger group in the chain, which is an ethane. So this would be ethane, so you have meth for the CH3, oxy, and then ethane, and that becomes the naming would be methoxyethane.
Now, you, we also use a common name. That's the formal name for it. But the common name are just the two branches that we've looked at, which are the ethyl and the methyl groups that we have. So methyl here, CH3, and the ethyl group, which is the CH2 and CH3, the double carbon there. And you add, put those together. So it's ethyl methyl, and then it's an ether. So you put the two branches separately, followed by the word ether, and then that is sort of the common name for these. Now we can go ahead and look at an example of one of these, just to look at it, and let's figure out what the IA, IUPAC and common names are for this ether. So we can start, first of all, we look and both sides of these have two carbons in their chain. So remember what that means. That means we're going to have two ethyl groups because ethyl is two carbons. Now, that means we have eth so ethane. Now, so that's the first thing we know. So the common, sorry, the IUPAC name would be ethoxyethane. So we have one ethyl group. Since there is not a larger group, since they're both the same, we can just pick one of them because they're identical. So we get rid of the ethyl and make it just eth, add the oxy because we have our oxygen here for the ether, and then ethane for the second uh, car carbon grouping. Now we also want to look at the common name, and the common name would be since we are two ethyl groups, we could use the common name would now be diethyl. So you wouldn't call it ethyl ethyl, you call it diethyl because remember di the prefix meaning two. So it's a diethyl ether. So the IUPAC name would be the ethoxyethane and the common name would be diethyl ether. So let's go ahead and finish up with our summary looking at these uh, alcohols and ethers. And what we looked at with these two was that the alcohols were hydrocarbons with the hydrogen is replaced by a hydroxyl or OH group. An ether is a hydrocarbon where, the, where there we have an O group in it. And we also discuss some of the different naming properties. We have the IUPAC names, as well as common names for these different types of organic compounds. So that concludes this lecture on alcohols and ethers. We'll be back again next time for another topic in physical science. So until then, have a great day, everyone, and I will see you in class.